Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Hey, we're back. It is November the 2nd, and we've got a great show for you. We're going to be talking about the stages of mastery And where are you? And we're going to be going into great detail starting in a second. But before we do, Julie and I want to share something with you that our little daughter, Zoe Grace, wrote last night. So, Julie? Yes, at about 11 o'clock at night, well past her bedtime, after waking herself up and being very upset. So this, I'll, I'll tie this in. When you're a little kid, you're in the stage of mastery where you are trying to figure out how friendships work and how to get along with people, and who's a best friend, and who's not a best friend, and who you can play with on the playground, who you can trust, who you can't. So she was upset because this little triumvirate of hers, two out of the three of them were fighting with each other. And So anyway, uh, she was very upset about this. I said, well, instead of being upset, why don't we put together a plan so that you all can play with each other? So she did this on her own, uh, in, practically in the dark. This is her plan. <laughs> it says... For the title, Ways to Fix a Broken Up Friendship. Broken Up Friendships. Number one, play by yourself and let them join you. Number two, create a game all three of us can play. Number three, just play in nature. Number four, bring both of the broken hearts together. Make them say sorry for whatever they did. This is her four-part plan. <laughs> and so I thought this was just some, you know midnight rambling she was going through but this morning she was very pensive which is not like her she's usually b- bouncing off the walls she's spring loaded she's spring loaded i said zoe what's wrong she said well i really hope my plan works did you put it in my backpack so i had to fold it up put it in her backpack and then in a specific pocket that was not mixed into her homework so i anxiously await the results of the four-part zoe plan for <laughs> friendship mending we thought you guys would like that because it certainly started our day with a laugh i mean how creative she's not even eight I years know. old yet she's trying you know she's trying to be the diplomat and get everybody back together so <clears throat> so from listening to you what know. she wrote it seems like of her three friends the two other girls must be going at it yes they got into a tiff and then one girl said you know because the two are mad at each other and then one said to zoe that she couldn't be friends with her if she was going to be friends with the other one (laughs) and so you know high drama on the playground yep that happens man (laughs) you know so i hope they worked it out hey by the way uh julie i didn't tell you this we do have the um new updated treasure map ready for them to download for 2022 Mm -hmm. and so that is your fill in the blank business plan guys and we've made it super simple for you to get it the new code for you to text is 2022. So text 2022 to 47, I always got to check, to 47372. Text 2022 as in next year, which is basically soon. <laughs> soon. Text 2022 to 47372. And what's going to happen is you're going to have to um, confirm that you texted us and you want the information. So you're going to text back the word yes. And then we're going to text you back a link and you're going to download the updated treasure map. I actually looked at it this morning. There's 63 pages in it. It is designed for you to read, learn, understand um, how to uh, essentially think about business and life planning because that's really truly what it is. And then the second part is the fill in the blank business plan. So we're going to walk you through how to do it. We're explaining in great deal a detail how to do it. And then the second part is you're actually going to create your own plan. This is the perfect thing for all of you to have completed prior to the start of the new year if you've not done so already. And this is the new one updated for 2022. So all you have to do is text the number 2022 to 47372. On your phone, go ahead and do that now. Text 2022 to 47372. So Julie Harris, what motivated you Mm -hmm. to uh, dust off this topic, which is a fantastic topic? And we talk about this every day. We refer to it all the time. We use it in coaching. The coaches use it all the time. And, you know, some of our uh, brokers use it with their agents. So there are four stages of learning, sometimes called the four stages of competence. And the thing to realize as we describe these to you is that you're not in the same stage everywhere in your business, right? So it's Or not, life. Or life. You know, it's not unusual for an agent to be really good and really competent at, say, working with buyers. Maybe they've done it a ton more than they have with listings. And so they're fairly competent, maybe the second or third stage, maybe even uh, the last stage. They've figured it out. And then when it comes to a competitive listing situation, 
they panic. They freak out because they're not in the same stage of mastery. So as we describe these to you, we're going to try and make it practical and tactical and ask yourself about different parts of your business. What stage are you in? So this first part, Julie, I was reading your notes prior to today's show. I actually didn't know this first part. And I had actually been thinking about it wrong for like 25 years. So this was uh, this. Some of this is from our book, Harris Rules. And by the way, thanks to all of you for uh, almost getting to 500 five star reviews of Harris Rules on Amazon. You guys can download the book, a perfect Christmas book, and it comes already gift wrapped in perfect festive green. That's the <laughs> cover of the book. It's like yep. teal, basically. Or you can obviously get it in an audio book. Uh, but if you're looking for some great motivation and inspiration for your new year, do consider getting our book, Harris Rules. And this content is in Harris Rules. And what you're about to share with mm -hmm. all of them is some of it is directly from our book. Yes. Yeah, so this is something that you, you know, maybe this is your first exposure to it, but you'll find yourself referring to it and using it with yourself and people you know, and maybe even your kids. So they initially described as, quote, the four stages of learning any new skill. The theory was developed at the Gordon Training International by uh, Noel Birch in the 70s. Now, since then, it's often been uh, attributed to Abraham Maslow, although the model doesn't actually appear in his major work. So this is referred to a lot of people, a lot of different places, and universally accepted and, and coached. So what appears happened is Abraham Maslow may have written this, but not necessarily... Like developed it. And really. developed it, right. Conceptually yeah. developed it, but not for the sake of... Uh, the dissemination through, you know, for the sake of like what we're presenting for it now. It's, it was originally probably created specifically for uh, psychological purposes and, right. and where the, you know, and people it's after him adapted. adapted and scaled up the concept. That's the way to think of it. Right. So the four stages of learning provides a model for learning. It suggests that individuals are individuals are initially unaware of how little they know or are literally unconscious of their incompetence. As they recognize their incompetence, they consciously acquire a skill, then consciously use it, polishing and improving with practice. Eventually, the skill can be utilized without it being consciously thought through. The individual is said to have then acquired unconscious competence. That threw all four terms into one long paragraph. But let's keep it practical and tactical and actually travel through this. And maybe you can think of some examples in your own life. So unconscious incompetence, that's the first stage. This is when the individual does not understand or know how to do something and does not necessarily recognize the deficit. They may even deny the usefulness of the skill. The individual must recognize their own incompetence and the value of the new skill before moving on to the next stage. The length of time somebody spends in the stage depends on their own desire to learn and improve. So let's make it practical and tactical. Let's do that. Okay, an agent has, let's say, never had to compete on a listing. They only work with referrals, friends and family, kind of slam dunk type of stuff, for being honest. They don't actually see a need for something like a pre-listing package or a formal listing presentation. They don't usually pre-qualify, they probably don't use any scripts, but they've been reasonably successful. They sometimes believe they already must have that skill because they've done okay so far. So in comes, you can tell this came from psychology, in comes the stimulus to learn. What causes an agent like that to recognize their own incompetence? Well, it's almost always losing a deal, a listing, or a buyer to someone more professional. Almost always a shocking surprise to somebody who is in unconscious incompetence. Well, so here's, as you guys are listening to Julie present this, I want you also to think about the fact that what happens oftentimes when an agent loses a listing, they aren't yet willing to accept it was from their incompetence. Right. They will oftentimes, like, pretty much every single time. Try to blame something external because what's the complexity of what's happening is their ego is preventing them to actually admit fault. They don't want to admit that they didn't get it because they didn't, essentially the other agent uh, beat them. In other words, they don't want to believe that they got beat. They don't want to believe that the other agent was more skilled or more compelling for the sake of the seller choosing them as their listing agent. And so what the agent will often do is they'll lie to themselves so they don't actually have to face down the fact that they're, you know, un un essentially incompetent. So they're wanting to stay in that unconscious incompetent stage, whereas if they were to admit that there's a lot of things that they didn't know, then they would force themselves to go to the next phase. So where a lot of you get stuck, where a lot of all, uh, all people get stuck, is in that first stage of unconscious incompetence. You don't know what you don't know, and there's something inside of you that's yeah. refusing to acknowledge that you don't know what you think you don't You're know. You're not really looking to find out that you don't know. Exactly, and most people stay in that stage their entire lives, and that's the sure. reason a lot of people, you know, confirmation bias, they are just every single aspect of their life is nothing other than trying to avoid anything that's going to question 
their current, you know, essentially dogma or really their current quagmire. Well, and we hear it all the time in coaching, right? So some of the common things that an agent will dodge this discovery with is, well, the other agent must have bought the listing when they overprice it, right? Or under commission or both, right? Um, they must have known them better. They were closer to that center of influence. Maybe they hit it off better. Oh, they just didn't like my personality. They will use, and sometimes all of the, the above in combination, as the excuse for why they didn't get the listing. When in fact, it's more than likely that that person actually sent something like, you know, a pre-listing package, used real scripts, actually pre-qualified, followed some of the things that we did in our manners thing, like showing up on time, well, not I mean, parking they, the they seller were, in. They were more professional and they earned the That's listing. The I, I remember you and I were in Hawaii not so long ago and, and in front of a big group of agents. Mm -hmm. And this agent, you know, essentially asked me this really well thought out question. And the essence of it was, why did this, why did I not get this listing when I did all these other things? And the real honest answer was because the other seller, the seller thought the other agent was more competent. The did other, a better the, job. They did a better job. That You lost the listing because the uh, seller felt the other agent was going to do a better job for him. It's that simple. So now the next layer, it isn't because the other, um, you know, it, it's not because they had a relationship where they told them a higher price or a lower commission. It was because the other agent was simply better, more skilled, knew how to, uh, you know, present a CMA, simple tactical things. Handled objections. Exactly. That's the reason. So Closed. if you, and it, let's be honest here, for those of you who are ready to move on to the next phase, which is conscious incompetence, the reason that so many of you, are in these long-term, you know, holding patterns of working with buyers or buying leads or thinking that the way forward is your branding and your teams and all these other things. The reason that you're attracted to that is because it's preventing you from actually having to be honest with yourself about why you're not pursuing the skill set to become a listing agent. So you're, you're actually consciously creating objectives and, and, and uh, obstacles to move forward and become a, you know, essentially a listing agent. And listing agent, guys, that's where you all need to progress in your real estate careers. That's where you're going to find freedom. That's where you're going to find uh, profits. That's where you're going to find all the reasons aligned with why you originally got into real estate. It's when you decide to finally be a listing agent. That's right. And so, you own it. So the goal, once you get here and you recognize it, the agent has to learn to set more appointments so they can see that they need to upgrade their skills. More experience will shine the light on their deficits. So that here's the thing. If it takes too long to experience that loss, to, to be like, God, how did that happen to me? The agent can actually stay in this stage forever. Yeah. And I, I have to say, when I was uh, reviewing this and editing it further, I did have the thought that the higher average sale prices make this stage last longer for, for some sure. people. Because they can go from deal to deal instead of having to have several deals, which, you know, the more volume you do, the more you learn. Right? This market this market has caused all ships to rise. And yes. as soon as the markets start to, you know, undulate and shift in different markets and agents are all of a sudden going to realize that, you know, honestly, you guys have been spoiled. High prices, high, you know. Really commi spoiled. Commissions have been falling, <laughs> but not as fast as prices have been rising. So yeah. many of you are getting raises, especially if you're on the listing side. If you're on the buyer's agent side, we've been talking about it for two years. It's definitely getting harder. But on the listing agent side, it's, if you know, essentially, if, if you're focused on uh, getting sellers, you're going to be getting consistent raises. Next year, Goldman Sachs, for example, predicted that home prices are going to rise by another 16%. Right. Yeah. And so 16 percent is a significant raise, uh, a significant bump in value in a lot of your markets, which will result in a significant increase in commission. Well, a 16 percent increase in your commission. How many people, you know, with a job job get a 16 percent raise every year? Yeah. Not well, it many. doesn't it doesn't maybe exactly work year, out that that's close. Yeah. yeah, exactly. OK, so let's just say that you're an agent that has had that aha moment and you're willing to own it. Now I've got to upgrade my skill. Well, you have just crossed over into the second stage called conscious incompetence. You are now conscious of your incompetence in certain things, not in everything, but let's say maybe on the listing end of things. So uh, the individual does not understand or know how to do something, but he or she recognizes the deficit as well as the value of the new skill in addressing that deficit. The making of mistakes can be integral in the learning process at this stage. Lots of trial and error, but the difference here is that the agent is willing to go through that. So an example would be an agent has now seen the light. Immediate needs would be the following. They must set more appointments to reinforce the need for new skills and to practice. It's okay if mistakes are made. They, they have to have the earn while you learn mentality. Lose some along the way, but find out why and fix it. And then, of course, we have presentation skills, better questions, learn, uh, listening more closely, and learning to close. So to be specific about core skills, and in this is, you know, I think you'll agree, coaching-wise, 
where agents are much more open to the things that they've got to adopt. Well, so let's level off there. Lose along the way and then find out why and fix it. Now that's, let's just, let's hover that's, there. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we teach you in our coaching program is if you don't happen to take a listing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you call the seller and find out why. Now, most times they're not going to tell you. They're going to um, not want you to feel bad. They're not going to even necessarily want to have a call. That's just the reality of it. So calling the seller and asking why they listed with somebody else will get you good information maybe 5% of the time. Yeah. Here's the real proven way to find out why you didn't get the listing. Stop not getting the listing. In other yeah. words, follow a system, follow a program it's that perfect. actually is proven to work. So for example, when we have a coaching client that is learning to be a listing agent and they're a successful listing agent, I'll give you, actually, this is a great example. We have thousands of agents who we've coached to be listing agents. And if we'll see their numbers drop, if they'll go from, you know, essentially, you know, one plus one equal, you know, two, or, and then if all of a sudden one plus one now equals zero, then we can go through and we'll ask them. So are you still, uh, you know, are you proactively lead generating? Yes. Are you pre-qualifying using the script, asking all, this, all the right questions prior to going on the appointment? Normally when you ask that question, they're going to say, well, kind of. And that's going to be a red flag that 100% that of the time, you're going to find out that they've gotten lazy in their pre-qual. They've yep. gotten lazy asking, you know, determining seller's motivation. They're not asking if they're actually competing. They're not positioning themselves to be the last agent that the seller interviews. They're not doing, okay, now let's say they are asking all the pre-qual questions. And as a coach, we'd say, okay, give us the last appointment that you went on. Okay, it's Bob and Betty Smith over at 123 Elm Street. All right, I want you to read me the answers to all their pre-qual questions. And then you're going to determine that they are or not, this is what coaching is, are or not asking all the quite right questions. Because if you don't ask the right questions, then you are actually dramatically uh, reducing the likelihood that you're going to take the listing. So the next question would be, did you send the pre-listing pack? Yes or no? Our pre-listing pack is what, Julie? 20 pages basically? Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's perfectly indexed. It's proven to work in all markets. You get it as part of our coaching program. The pre-listing pack is your silent salesperson. It's designed to do the selling for you. Handling objections before exactly. you get there. It talks about why, you know, the big questions that prevent a lot of you or the fear, fear of the big questions that prevent a lot of you from moving forward as being a listing agent. Will you cut your commission? Why would I list with you? What you know, makes you different? Sally Sue down the way supposedly is the number one listing agent in the marketplace. Why would I list with you? What happens if I'm not uh, happy with your service? What, blah, blah, blah. Up. All the questions the seller is going to ask you anyway, making the listing appointment very awkward or, um, you know, hasn't even thought of yet to ask you are already answered ahead of time in the pre-listing pack. So when you go to the seller's house, our listing presentation, when you follow a listing presentation, is going to be about 15 to 20 minutes long total. Yes. That's it. So here's the thought. When you're trying to figure out why you didn't get a listing, if you're following a system, then it's just a function of going through there, the entire system, asking questions to see what you did not do or what you did not do completely. And then we can quickly diagnose why you're not getting the listing. It'd be the same reason, like prior to taking off on a plane, the pilot's going to do a pre-check, a pre-flight check, um, you know, check out, <laughs> pre-flight che check. Checklist. Checklist, yeah. yeah. And then during the flight, he's going to be checking different gauges and things. And then if all of a sudden one system, if he, for example, didn't do the pre-flight checklist and there was one system that he did not, uh, you know, completely check out, well, that's going to cause obvious problems down the road. Same thing happens. Your business is a system. Our coaching program is a system. Follow the system and you'll get consistent results. And if you stop getting consistent results, it's actually very easy to go in there and figure out why. And you'll discover that no, never do you not get a listing because the seller told you or the other agent set a higher price or a lower commission because you'll have already vetted all those things prior to actually going to the seller's mm -hmm. house with your pre-listing pack and your pre-qualifying questions. You guys get it? Don't leave anything to chance, especially a, a listing. Yes. And so that's why sometimes you walk away and you don't really know what happened because you don't do your appointments the same way every time. It's hard for you to personally diagnose what was actually wrong. We have done podcasts called the seven step listing process. And that is indeed what we teach you in coaching. So for example, and you rattled off a lot, you've got to, at this stage, you learn to improve your lead follow up through using scripts. Um, using whiteboards, vital stats report, you do the 18 relentless lead follow-up rules, the pre-qualification scripts, pre-listing package, listing presentation, buyer presentation, and of course you track everything. And as you're doing this in this stage, it's really critical that you set more appointments so that you can learn to actually apply it. You know, sometimes agents will get to this point and they'll, you know, like they'll have a pre-listing package, but because they haven't been 
brave enough to use it and try it out, they get stuck. And so again, we go back to coaching. A good coach is gonna recognize you're stuck here. You've got a beautiful pre-listing package. Let's get out and use it. Okay, so the stimulus to learn again is still fear of loss. The ego being bruised by not being as good as you thought. Good time for recalibration of goals for the sake of keeping the motivation high. And the agent often realizes that in order to do more deals, they have to actually upgrade their skills. So how many agents actually, Julie? And, I, and this is kind of an interesting thought, I think. How many agents out there never get to that point of yeah. being uh, essentially un a consciously incompetent because they never, their egos can't survive, or at least they perceive they can't survive, right. the rejection that comes from having to learn the hard way. And by the way, learning the hard way is not required, but it definitely does make it so that you cut through your own BS faster when you lose a few. Now, we would suggest you skip the losing a few part and you yeah. just actually learn how to be a listing agent and follow our system right out of the gates. That way you don't have to lose a few first. Uh, but the reality of it is, is many of you will never even put yourselves in a position to experience anything even remotely resembling uh, rejection. You've nerfed your lives up to the extent that you're never going to experience what are, are all the best benefits of being a real estate agent, which is truly being a listing agent. Yes. And you know what happens there is that's when an agent will say, hopefully, finally, <laughs> they'll say, I'm stuck. Yep. I know how to do, it's usually like three to five million in volume, you know, and as prices raise, they'll probably be like five to seven million in volume. But they do that for like four or five years in a row, some of them 10 years in a row. And they'll say, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I seem to know how to get what I'm getting. But how am I going to get to 15 million? What well, do I need to do? But so what a lot of them will do is they'll put themselves in places where they're going to be a big fish in a small pond. Right. Where they're three to five million or they're 10 to 15 million or whatever it is, makes it so they get all the attention and recognition they possibly could want. Mm -hmm. And in their office, they're number one. They get plaques and awards all the time. And so they just essentially, ris right? They've risen to a very low standard, basically. Right. And it's not until but some- But it's kind of enough to, to do a little bit better than getting by. And everyone tells them they're great. Everyone tells them the greatest thing since sliced bread. They, you know, and maybe in their world they are, but they know, they know that they're capable of a lot more. And it's not until they come in contact with other people's that are doing a lot more, do all of a sudden they decide to you know rock their own world and take it to the next mm -hmm. level. And then they have to basically start admitting what they don't know. I, again, offensive to the ego, but yeah. necessary for the evolution of a human. Well, and that's why, sadly, some of them have to have their butts kicked multiple times to finally have enough pain to go forward. Yeah. You it, know, but it, you're, there are, we have a lot of coaching clients that they're always fun to see them come in because sometimes they'll be fresh freshly licensed, but they'll be like, you know what? I listen to the podcast. Oh, I, totally. I don't need to cut. I don't need to have all those experiences. Just tell me what to do. And they are usually people like engineers, pilots, people who have had other successes we're getting following a, lot of, a system. We're getting a lot of people. Exactly. And this for a lot of people yeah. are second and third career. We're yes. getting a lot of people that are ex-military. We're getting a lot of people, police, you know, cops. We're mm -hmm. getting a lot of school teachers. We're getting a lot of middle management types. A lot of people have decided, you know, what is this called? The great resignation or whatever, right? There's a lot of people yeah. that are making life uh, decisions, uh, you know, changing careers because they want more flexibility in their lives mm -hmm. after COVID. Yeah. You know, all kinds. We talked they, about but this. But they do tend to be more coachable when they've totally. been in a situation where maybe they've worked through some of that ego and they're okay being told what to do and to follow a system that's proven. And maybe you don't have to reinvent the wheel this time around. Um, so that's interesting to compare you know, people like that versus agents that have kind of done okay for like five years. And now everybody tells them that they're experienced, right? So they must be good. And then, then you get like this whole other flavor of ego. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they want to be coaches. Of <laughs> That's exactly how I, <laughs> After all. After they, they build a team. After they build a team and their brand. And their, brand. And their logo. Of course. Don't well, forget the don't logo. Don't go down that rabbit hole yet. I know. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to do the other ones tomorrow or do you want to keep going um why don't you introduce the uh the third phase the third point and then we'll round the bend for okay. the sake of having something for tomorrow and following or for tomorrow really okay so the next one is conscious competence this is also fun coaching okay the individual understands or knows how to do something however demonstrating the skill or knowledge still requires a lot of concentration it might be broken down into steps, you know, like the seven-step listing process. And there is a heavy conscious involvement in executing the new skill. So you're still going back to that checklist. Did I actually pre-qualify this person? Did I ask all of the questions? Okay, well, I missed a couple. And now I got to call that seller back and I got to ask those questions. You're very consciously going after this new skill. So let's talk about this phase. So let's say you're an experienced agent. 
and you've been, you know, you're like Julia was describing, you're selling your 12 to 20 houses per year, you're ready to go to the next level. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to relearn some of the things you think you know. You're going to have to actually go back to that uh, beginner's mindset. And for some of you, that is soul crushing because you feel like somehow, again, it's, it's essentially the ego in it's flux. It, it is. It's psychologically, for a lot of you, it's psychologi- It's unneeded pain, really, because the reality of it is, is for you to take you know, 10 steps forward, sometimes you have to take 10 steps back to start. To, but the 10 steps back is so you can build the momentum to actually leap forward and you know, essentially go further than you ever have gone before. And that, that level of uncertainty and um, uh, you know, sometimes, um, what do you want? It's fear, basically. Yeah. When, when you can accept that that's part of change and on the other side of change is what you're going to want more of what you have, but probably a lot different flavors. <laughs> the reality of it is, is when you get to that point, you're going to need a coach. You're going to need a path to follow. You're going to want to have the shortest period of time from where you are to where you want to be. That's what a coach is for. We are not very effective, truthfully, for, for people that are going to have this mindset of, I don't like being told what to do. I'll just figure it out myself. Those people, when they show up in our coaching rosters, they're usually the worst clients because all they want to do is be combative. They're, we are really great for people that do not want to screw around with trying to figure things out. They just want to basically uh, go from A to B as quickly, as effortlessly, with the least amount of money and time spent as possible. That's what we do. That's what we, we're, not gonna, we're not an idea fest. You know, a lot of coaches and trainers, they have never really sold real estate before. That's all why they th- use the word try. Right. You got to try an ad on Facebook. And all they're doing is coming up with a new idea every single week, every yeah. single month. Oh, did you hear about this change and this change and this change? And there's this new shiny object and this new shiny object. And a lot of you are going, yes, tell me more. I want the new shiny object. You're never actually getting good at anything. You're never actually moving up the phases of learning. You're never actually getting to the point where you're going to be competent at anything because you're always jumping from shiny object to shiny object. And the core of this really, if you want to drill down these four points, and we'll get to the other uh, two in detail tomorrow, Mm -hmm. is it really is doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. But for you to even to be even on that um, that pathway, that mental pathway, you first have to admit there are many things that you are completely and totally incompetent about. And Julie and I as well. Tons. It's painful. And if you're struggling with this because we've made it too personal, maybe take an example that's not real estate, right? Because we all can pull out examples of where we've had to go through these stages. Um, I write about uh, exercise in the Harris Rules book, for example. You know, I thought I knew how to work out until I went to Orange Theory and had real coaches who did it for a living. It's even like we're raising a kid. We don't know what the hell we're doing. Right. I mean, most times. (laughs) I know. And, you know, I saw like last year was virtual school. She she might be raising her adults. I'm not sure. (laughs) No, she's raising herself, obviously. Uh, but, you know, doing – and I've had uh, conversations with parents about virtual school where we all, like, went to uh, first grade Spanish together, and <laughs> we all kind of throw around some Spanglish, and we think we can get around. But now because we had to sit through those classes online, we're filling in some of those gaps. We're systematizing our language at a higher level than our own winging it abilities, which were not that competent, right? So you can pull out different things in your day-to-day life that maybe aren't about real estate and recognize those stages of mastery. That's right. So guys, we're going to finish off tomorrow where we left off today. Hey, do us a favor. A lot of you are listening to us on iTunes. Please give us a five-star review on iTunes. Don't wimp out and give us a four-star. You know you want to give us a five-star review, but we really sincerely appreciate it. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. It really does help us with our search rankings on iTunes. Uh, In the meantime, thank you for continuing to make this the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. We're downloaded in over 60 different countries. It's our pleasure and honor to be part of your lives, and we sincerely appreciate the opportunity to be your coaches and sometime, hopefully, in the near future, your formally, your formal real lifetime coaches. Did I say that right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. (laughs) Have a great day, guys. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.